You're John. Up. Thank you. Um, uh, so for the last uh, at least, I don't know, 10 hours, there's been widespread looting in Chicago. A tremendous, like uh, no one has ever seen, even worse than 1968. Wow. And it, it, uh, it made me think actually of a line in a, a section of textbook, a new textbook of America, where Rand asked the question, can a society exist without a moral principle? And I'll quickly just a bit of answer if you don't mind. She says, we are still observing by tradition so many moral precepts that we take them for granted and do not realize how many actions of our daily lives make are made possible only by moral principles. Why is it safe for you to go into a crowded department store, make a purchase and come out again? The crowd around you needs goods. They could easily overpower the few salespeople, ransack the store. The only thing it, she says, there's nothing to stop them and nothing to protect you except the moral principle of your individual right to life and property. And I, I'm just watching video after video of, I mean, every store on my block, your own, has been ransacked. Oh, wow. All the glass is broken. Uh, the whole city has been burning and on fire. And I, I just am, you know, is that, is that moral principle, those basic moral principles uh, gone, that, that this type of complete nihilism is, uh, is happening on streets. Is this, uh, is this all over downtown Chicago? Is, and it's during the day? It's actually happening right now it's, during, it's, during the it's day? It's downtown, but you're wrong. It's also in, in the oh, yeah, south and west sides. It's, it's all over. It's big. When it's in Atlanta, you saw what they did to the CNN building. It's in, it's in Minneapolis, although the National Guard supposedly clamped down on them yesterday. It's in L.A., LA has never seen right hasn't seen riots like this since 90, 92, the Rodney King um, a beating uh, or uh, and um, is this is this nihilism? I mean, it reminds me of what Dr. Peacock used to say that you know it's not that necessarily they want to steal it, but they just they don't want to have the value. They just don't want you to have the value. No, I mean, if it was stealing, you could somewhat understand it, but no, this is more than stealing. This is smashing. I mean, there was no stealing going on at CNN. They were just smashing the building. They were just destroying. They, they're burning cars. They're not stealing cars. They're burning cars. And they're not just burning police cars. Okay, they might have a reason to hate the police, although it's an illegitimate, irrational reason. They're just destroying private property for the sake of destroying private property. This is just nihilism, anger, frustration, hatred, um, and, and a breakdown of civilization. And it really is... I mean, if we weren't, if I did, hadn't committed to doing this um, this chat, I was going to basically talk about the riots because I think there's a lot to say about the riots. Um, you know, this is truly a breakdown of civilization. This is what Ayn Rand predicted years and years ago. This is the culmination of a mixed economy, a culmination of a Trump presidency. You talk about morality. When you have the, the, the president, the commander in chief, who is a moral? Who is uh, you know who who uh, uh, has no standards, no principles? Um, you know, just could say anything, any day. Who cares? Uh, and then you've got you've got governors who take arbitrary power and shut people down. I mean, think about all these people writing in the streets. They've been locked up in their homes for the last three months. I mean, think of the frustration, the anger building up while that is happening. And all you needed is a spark. And that spark was this tragic killing of this, of this uh, um, black man in, uh, in Minnesota who was, uh, who was you know, being arrested and the cop, the cop basically killed him. Um, and it, that was the spark. It's not the reason. It's just the spark. The reason is deep-seated frustration, hatred that is expressing himself in this nihilistic mayhem, which is just about breaking things. And of course, it's, you know, the, this is being taken advantage of by every nihilist group out there from, uh, you know, from Antifa to elements within the Black Lives Matter movement to white supremacists who are going there and, 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 and uh, you know, sparking even more mayhem just, just for, the, for the hell of it. Why not, right? Uh, and it's... And it's in, in most cities around the country, uh, particularly cities that have, uh, you know, cities like that, that where there have been police shootings or there was, there's frustration with the police. But it's not just the police. Think about it this way. How many of these people are unemployed now? How many of these people don't have jobs? 
How many of these people might even be small business owners who don't have a small business anymore because the government shut it down and, and basically made it impossible to ever open up? I mean, think of all the frustration that we've had over the last three months with everything that's going on. And we have a moron in the White House who keeps fueling this and, in, and, and inflaming this instead of being a leader, instead of a calming influence, instead of pointing out the issue of, of private property and, in, and rights and, and respect your fellow man and, and, and think about what you're doing. These are people who might employ you. These are people who create the businesses that make it possible for you to earn a living. None of that, nobody is making that message. Right. And and it, it, it and instead they're either just, oh, it's this group or that group. They, you know, they're going after particular groups where my guess is 90 percent of the people out there rioting are now members of Antifa. So it, it, you turn Antifa into a terrorist group doesn't mean anything to them. You know, it doesn't mean anything to them. So it's it's you've got to actually a you've got to to be much more aggressive in terms of the in terms of uh, National Guard and police to stop this and B, you've got to have a proper response. You've got to have a presidential response and a moral response. And Trump and most of our political leadership is just incapable of doing that. So, so here's the parallel I want to draw on and I'm, I'm going to give a longer answer than, but I think this topic deserves a longer answer. Um, in 1969, I think it was 1969. Ayn Rand gave a talk called Apollo and Dionysus. Everybody, and everybody should go read her talk. Read the essay, Apollo and Dionysus, right? Uh, Jonathan, do you remember where that's published? Which, which of her books? Oh, I know. It's in the, um, um, the Anti-Industrial Revolution, which is the, the new title is um, Peter Schwartz's... Uh, Anyway, I can't remember. But look up. Apollo and Dionysus by Ayn Rand. It's available online for free. It's available both on YouTube. You can listen to her deliver the speech. Return of the you, Primitive. Return of the Primitive. That's right. Return of the Primitive. Thanks. Return of the Primitive. Um, and it's one of the great essays, one of the greatest essays ever written. It's a great essay. She compares the launching of the Apollo with Woodstock. Uh, Apollo 11, landing on the moon, um, and, and everything that that represents and the, the love uh, that Americans have for technology and, and progress and success and science and, 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 and she associates that with Apollo. Um, and you could think about that yesterday with, with, uh, with uh, Elon Musk's spaceship taking off and docking with the International Space Station and wow, what a, what a great achievement. For a rocket designed and produced by a private entity, yes, with government funding, but a basically a private entity, private entrepreneur who's built a business whose only customer is the government, but at least it's not all government. At least we've proved that a, that a private enterprise can do this. It's a beautiful thing, right? And at the same time, barbarians in the streets of America, the, 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 the children and grandchildren of the, of the generation of Woodstock is out in the streets of America, manifesting the philosophy of Woodstock in reality, making it real by smashing windows, burning buildings, destroying for the sake of destroying. This is Woodstock. This is Dionysus. And what is Dionysus? Dionysus is the placement of, it's the opposite of Apollo. Apollo is reason, fact, logic, reality. Dionysus is emotion. Dionysus is you know, the God of wine, right? It's all about emotion. It's all about pleasure. It's all about hedonism. And a hedonism is the brother, sister related to nihilism. And think about the culture in which we live. We live in a tribalistic culture guided by what? Guided by nihilism. Nihilism across the board. And again, I know everybody thinks I'm just a hater of Donald Trump. But is Donald Trump motivated by anything but emotion? Is there anything to suggest that there's any thinking going on with Donald Trump? He is the most emotionalistic president I've ever seen in the White House. And this is definitely what you're seeing right now culturally is SpaceX versus the riots. The riots representing three forces in our culture. It represents, 
it, well, no, the, the riots are representing Dionysus in our culture, but it's not just the riots, it's our universities. And it's the White House, all represent Dionysus. And the little bit that was represents Apollo is SpaceX. And it's big tech and small tech. And of course, everybody hates big tech and small tech. We've turned around. We're not lovers of Apollo anymore. We, we, we take for granted technological achievement. We take for granted the next generation of an iPhone and the ability to do Google searches for zero cost you know, it, it, and, and access to all the knowledge in, in the entire world. We just take that for granted. We don't admire it. We don't appreciate it. We don't venerate it. Like Ayn Rand describes in Apollo and Dionysus, where she still had hope for the American people, now we all condemn it. Now we are all stuck in the mud of Woodstock. Now we are all just emotionalists following our tribal instincts, our tribal leaders, mimicking whatever, you know, just mouthing off the truths that we have, that have been revealed to us from those leaders. I mean, what we're seeing today is a direct consequence of Woodstock and all of the intellectuals that led to Woodstock and have the products of Woodstock. How many of those Woodstock attendees riling a rod, you know, uh, in the mud there, ultimately became university professors and taught the generation of rioters right now that reality is not that important, that logic and reason are impotent, that they should follow their genes, and that the businessmen, the billionaires, the high-tech companies, the, the producers, the creators, the builders, they are nothing. They don't deserve what they have. They, they, their property is meaningless. That, in, that, that um, property rights are just a male, white, chauvinist ugliness and that they should destroy that property rights is just thievery and now you're seeing the consequence so the rights today are just the consequence of what we've been teaching our kids for generations now and is the consequence of not challenging that new left generation instead elevating them to the heights of academia so that they can take their ugly ideas, their horrible view of man and, and of the world and infect our kids with it. And then who do we have challenging these leftist ideas? We have the Dionysus of the right, whether it's the religionists or whether it's just the pragmatic, unthinking, anything goes, make America great again, Emptiness, emptiness, anti-intellectual, anti-ideas. We have Dionysus on both sides fighting right now. And those of us, very few, tiny minority, tiny of the tiniest, emailed among my fans online. The few who still appreciate Apollo, appreciate reason, appreciate progress, appreciate science, we're the smallest, the smallest minority. Yeah. When the president of the United States attacks Twitter because they dare label something he says, then he is attacking private property in the same way as people are smashing windows. The nihilism is everywhere. The anti-reason is everywhere. The anti-property rights is everywhere. The anti-achievement is everywhere. Conservatives who want to break up big tech, conservatives who want to go after Amazon, who hate Amazon. Why? What did Amazon do to anybody other than make our lives better, substantially, significantly better? And yet they are the enemy. What's the difference? And if everybody attacks Amazon, then why not smash Amazon's windows or whoever is in our way? Because it's not Amazon, so we'll smash the windows that happen to be in the street. It's just the, the, the lack of any kind of respect, the lack of any kind of thinking. And yes, Jonathan, you're absolutely right. The lack of any kind of moral conviction. Morality today is associated with religion and nothing else. And nobody wants the, 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 the religious morality. So they rebel against it. To hell with morality. Morality is just an obstacle in our way. 
And of course, what did they teach in our universities? Well, he's just a subjective white male creation that has been foisted on you by white males in order to subjugate you to the existing order so that white males can continue to exploit you. That's where we are today. And what's happening in the streets of American cities right now is an absolute reflection of that. And instead of all of us rallying around the idea of a spaceship, around the idea of getting within 24 hours, whatever you want from Amazon, instead of us rallying around Twitter and Facebook and, and every technology company out there that's making our lives better, instead of that, we condemn everything and everybody. And there is no body to stand up to Dionysus. Dionysus is everywhere. So, I mean, I'm sorry, Jonathan, you have to literally witness this. And I'm sure now you're in the lockup, not because the government, but now because it's dangerous to go out to the streets. And that is just a, just a horrible thing to live through. Um, and, and I know many of you probably live in cities where the same thing is happening. And you have to be careful now where you go and, and where you're turning. But this is the consequence of ideas. This is not an accident. This is not just one side. This is a consequence of bad, evil ideas and nobody out there challenging those ideas in the country. Left and right have adopted the ideas of Dionysus. Um, I gave a talk, which unfortunately was never recorded. I gave a talk uh, in 2008, uh, 2008, 2009, 2008 or 2009, it was 50, you know, it was, um, it was to commemorate Ayn Rand's talk on, on Apollo Dionysus. And it, it wasn't a necessarily, uh, you know, so it was a talk basically updating that. And, and basically what I said was Dionysus is represented on the left by environmentalism, but it's also in those days, I think uh, this whole identity politics wasn't quite evident. So it's represented by the entire left and in, in both uh, the, the, the extreme left in both environmentalism and in the identity policy, and on the right, by religion. And it's not just religion anymore. It's now the kind of pragmatic, do-anything, nationalistic, white supremacist, kind of alt-right, new right, nationalist right. It's, it's all over the right. It's all over the left. And, and it's hard to be hopeful right now uh, in America. All right, sorry. That was a long answer to your question, um, Jonathan, but I had to get it out. Beautifully said. Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks. All right. Uh, let's, let me take, I've, I've, let me, I've got a few uh, super chat questions. Let me take a couple and then we'll go back to uh, uh, Leonard and Andrew. Uh, it's a paradox that the director, of, uh, let me see if there's anything related to this. Um, okay. What are your thoughts? The connection between disintegration, this is the concept that Leonard Peikoff introduces in, uh, dis in the Dim Hypothesis, his, his, his brilliant book. Uh, between disintegration and the current riots uh, currently happening now, I believe what we are seeing is an example of disintegration in the dim hypothesis. Absolutely. So what we've got is we've got, uh, we've got complete disintegration, complete disintegration, no morality, no, I, no, no idea, conceptual idea, property rights of, of, of appropriate behavior of right versus wrong. This is anything goes nihilistic disintegration. And if you remember, D2 in, in Leonard's categories of integration is nihilism. It's the complete destruction. And of course, my view is that Trump is, is to a large extent a D character, you know, D2 type. Uh, so we've got disintegration across the board. And we know disintegration is unstable. You can see it right now in the world. Disintegration is rioting and breaking and looting and, and destruction. And that is not sustainable. That will lead to, you know, in, in some context, the police state, that will lead to some integration. And of course, that integration is not going to be around a proper concept of individual rights and freedom. That integration will be about an improper concept like the nation, the state, or the or religion. And that's where we're heading. We're heading, I'm more convinced of it right now than ever. We're heading towards authoritarianism. I think Leonard was overly optimistic. My fault. I convinced him to be overly optimistic. I, you know, Leonard wanted to say that the horizon is much shorter. And I told him, no, make it 50 years and give us a little bit of hope. 
And I was wrong. He was right. This is happening much faster than I ever thought it was happening. But this country is disintegrating. And the solution to disintegrating is a strong man, left or right, middle, doesn't matter. It'll be a strong man who unites everybody around some idea of integration, whether it be law and order, nation, something, religion, something. And that's, you know, we're looking now and people, people are going to be desperate now for a unifier, for somebody to bring us together. Under what? By what principle? By guiding, of, you know, what's the principle that unites us? They won't care. They'll just want the nuttiness, the craziness, the violence to end. So, yeah, I mean, we're living through the dim hypothesis, you know, in ways that I wouldn't have expected. Um, okay, I'll take two more questions and then we'll go, well, let's see. Is America still the country Iron Man had hoped for or is it gone? I mean, I think there's still a remnant of America there, and but it's it's so fragmented and in different places and not integrated and not... It, it's it's disappearing, unfortunately. And again, I refer to a talk that Leonard Peikoff gave, and I keep referring to this, America versus Americans that he gave in 2004 or three or two. No, 2002, because it was the eve of the invasion of Iraq. 2002, and he talked about the, the death of the American sense of life, and I think things have only gotten worse since then. And this lockdown and the riots and everything else are just more more indications of kind of the death of the American sense of life. I don't think it's dead completely. I think you see it once in a while. You see it in the rocket launch and people's response to that rocket launch. You see, you know, the, the, the SpaceX, you see it a little bit in, 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 in Silicon Valley. You see it in the productive nature of, you see it in people not wanting the lockdowns and, and, and resisting them here and there, but it's too little. It's just, there's not a lot of it. There's not a lot of it. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, Please take this opportunity, go to yourronbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...